I don't know if anybody's watching yet or if anybody can hear me. Tested this out yesterday, it worked out okay. Oh, hey, how you doing? Great. We're going to start at 10 o'clock, but I, I just logged on a, a couple minutes early just to see if the setup was okay and to make sure that everything's working and whatnot. So I've, 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 I've done a lot of streaming on Facebook, but this is my first time streaming on Twitch and particularly for Pixelogic. Pixelogic. So I'm pretty, pretty uh, excited about this. Thanks for checking it out. Just three more minutes, and um, that's when that's when I'm officially supposed to start. Thanks. I'll be going over kind of things not in a linear fashion I'm gonna go jump back and forth and I'll repeat this probably when people tune in besides besides you folks um, it's gonna be a, like a non-linear kind of back and forth um, talking about setting up a figure talking about articulation talking about what if that same figure was going to be used for collectibles the first session tonight's probably just gonna be sculpting the figure some more and and going over verbally you know what the articulations about with a model that's already been partially articulated but um my time is is kind of restricted so i can only do these for an hour and then you know I, i'm going to try and do them every other week but i work i work a couple i work i work a day job and do the toys full time at night so um hope we'll see if there's a strong enough interest interest in me continuing not on my part but on the part of of you folks watching because if, if you're not interested um, if it turns out to be you know kind of lame then you know, I don't know if Pixelogic is going to keep me on board with the stream but hopefully it's all right
Okay, so um, thank you to Pixelogic uh, for hosting having for hosting me uh, for the ZBrush Live presentation. This is my first. My name's Joe Mena. Um, you can see it on the bottom of the screen. It says Sculpting for Toys and Collectibles, and that's what this is going to be about. Um, you know, I'm going to take this model that I kind of kitbashed together from some other models and turn it into ultimately an action figure and then even a statue maybe if there's time. So uh, before I go any further, I'll show what a generally articulated figure looks like from the beginning um, or starts to look like. You know, there's a ball joint in the arm. There's a hinge joint in the elbow. The ball joint was made with a poly mesh 3D sphere. And this was done before live Boolean. So this is all done with Dynameshing. When we do the articulation in this series, we're going to use live Booleans. And it's not something that I've really gone through before. So we're going to kind of be learning together. But I've got the workflow down with, with, with regular Boolean, so it shouldn't be a problem. And one of the things that I do to make my joints is I create a, a ready-made see the poly groups even though it's very dense oops I create a ready-made cylindrical joint that I um, segregate into uh, I, I separate by groups in order to make you know the two outer um, cylinders become part of say the upper arm and then the or knee or upper leg and then the yellow uh, cylinder in the middle will become part of the What's up, the Phoebe? How you doing? Mike May! Holy sh... I'm not allowed to curse at ZBrush. You're not distracting me, man. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Jeez. Um, I, I, if, if you guys make a comment and I don't respond right away, it's because I have a split screen set up. So I'm like, I have to totally turn to the left in order to see anything that's coming up. And sometimes I get distracted with all of my BSing and talking. That I kind of get wrapped up in what I'm doing here, but ultimately this will be um, so that that that's just the, one of the ways that I start to break up, um, set up a joint. But I'll go back to this. This is the original model that I started with. I sculpted it from scratch. It's a it's a very dense model because it's still um, in a dynamesh state. And I sculpt using Dynamesh all the time. I don't do a lot of low poly. I mean, I don't do a lot of sub sub D modeling, and um, because I like to combine things, I like to cut things, I like to um, work like ZBrush as if I was working in clay. My background is as a traditional sculptor, and so that's kind of the that informs the way I work an awful lot. So enough with the talking. I'm going to take the clay buildup brush. I'm going because it's an action figure, right? I'm going to keep symmetrical on, and then I have a battery of references that I like to use. Uh, these are copyright free images, I believe, that I've gotten off the inter internet, and I use a lot of classical reference for building up certain features. Uh, classical sculpture is, is is my favorite thing. So, you know, I, I look at pictures of real athletes and bodybuilders and just regular folks, too. But, like, you know, I'll, I'll look at the way the um, rib cage is interdigitating with this serratus muscles here. And then the latissimus dorsi in the back. And I get all the names of the muscles wrong because it's been, I'm, I'm old as dirt. And so I forget, I, I basically forget the names of everything. But, like, you know, I'm going to build up the costal arch. I'm using the regular smooth brush, but what I really like is if you go to Lightbox, you go to Brush, you go to Smooth, and then you go to Smooth Stronger. When you have like this, this is this is 3.69 million um, uh, points or polygons. I but I think the, the active points is what it says. So it does it does tend to correspond roughly with the poly count. The three. It's three, th three million and three hundred and ninety-three thousand, so it's pretty close. So, 
got to remember, like, so this is going to be an action figure. This base mesh is cool for, you know, something that's going to be seen. Something that's going to be seen, um, you know, like a statue or something. But for an action figure, you say it's, it's going to be six inches. So imagine it's going to be six inches on your screen. And then that's the level of detail that you need to impart to your model. So I go in and I take Dame Standard. And I'll start to work on getting some pop in here. And for this, I'll actually go back to the regular smooth brush because I don't want to overdo it. This nice blended smooth look is great for sculpture, but for action figures, you tend to want to exaggerate stuff. And because this is like a monster type creature, I mean, I've got a stack, I've got a, st a stack of anatomy books here, like that are as high as my shoulder from the t top of the table, two stacks. But I don't, I can't reference those while I'm talking to you guys, and you know, get distracted like that. So I'm just gonna, if I make mistakes, just bear with me. This is more about the the technique than than the aesthetics to a, to an extent. Although you do want them, we want to make something that looks cool here. I don't mean the royal we, I mean us as a group. This is like, I like to look at this as a participatory thing, you know. Hey Brad, what's up? So I'm going to go in, hit solo. I'm going to go to uh, select lasso and hide his arm here. So I can get in on this. With greater ease. And the other reason that you want to, that I'm exaggerating this is when I apply a texture. Now I'm not going to texture map him. But I am going to apply a texture via, um, you know, using alphas and stuff like that. And even in, in that case, you, um, it's easy for de detail to get lost. Now, I'm not doing any Dynamesh stuff here. But I will when I get to the hands and, and feet and stuff like that. I always look up from up. I mean, I try and view my model from all angles, you know, to make sure that the back is wider than the front. Uh, you know, a lot of times people don't realize that the chest, the rib cage, is almost as deep as it is wide as well. What gives the rib cage added width are the muscles on the sides that that make it look wider than than it is if you were to look at it think about it as a, as a whole thing as opposed to the bones underneath
So just keep going around with Dame Standard. I'll turn off symmetry. And you can see already from far away. There's more contrast to provide visual cues that the eyelash is onto when it's looking at the figure from far away. I said far away twice. Is this cool so far? You guys good with this? Because, I mean, in order to sculpt for toys and collectibles, you have to sculpt a base model to a, you know, a certain extent. I, I, I wanted to get at least a, a certain amount, the majority of the work done by providing the base mesh that I started with. Which is one that I specifically developed for action figure use. But for one reason or another, I never actually used it in a, in a project. It's looking a little cartoony. It's looking a little like chiclets. That's kind of gum that they used to have when I was a kid. But you'll see, like the whole point is when I start doing this stuff later on, see it all it all gets lost. So that's why I want to exaggerate what I'm what I'm doing. So when I add the texture, the stuff is um It holds up underneath, you know, the, the 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 superficial relief details. I'm gonna go back to clay build up. I keep I keep an intensity of around like nine. And you're gonna have to excuse me. Something I can't control. Even though I said for nobody to bother me. I've got three kids, two of which are home right now. So there's a distinct possibility that I could get interrupted at any time by my son or daughter. I'm going to leave that because that's going to get totally changed. I'm not going to mess too much with the shoulders right now because that totally changes when I do the... Um, Articulation for this shoulder joint. I'm going to turn off symmetry. Uh, I'm I'm in FIBA. I'm embarrassed to say I haven't checked out any of these streams yet. Not because I don't like, not, not because I'm not interested or I don't want to. Because I just I have a full full schedule. I'm working on a Cintiq HD 24 inch HD Cintiq, but I heard that the 27 inches are the same size, so I think I might get one of those. I, 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 I held off because I thought that they would be too big for my for my desk. Same thing with the back. You have to get in there and.
I'm going to put symmetry back on for that. I mean, even if a character is wearing a cape or something like that, you want to sculpt the entire figure. The sculpture, even if it's, you know, it, even if even if it's got areas that are hidden, and just because it's an action figure, doesn't mean that it shouldn't get treated with the same degree of uh, scrutiny as a as a as a, as a statue. I'm I'm good, I'm good friends with Shane Olson. Wow, yeah. I mean, I've only met him. I've only known him for two years, from the summits and and from Facebook and stuff. But Shane is awesome. For anatomy, I would recommend a book on Amazon. It's piled under here. I can't get to it. It's called Die Gestalt des Menschen. It's a German anatomy book by a guy named Gottfried Baumes. Let me see if I can get the link here. Can I? Can I? Best anatomy book out there, in my opinion. I've had mine since 1991, and I I, I can't say enough about it. Um, it's awesome. He's got a bunch of other anatomy books as well, but this is the core core anatomy book. I have like three or four of his anatomy books. It's expensive. Like a hundred bucks or something like that. Then there's also Scheider's Atlas of Anatomy. That's a good book. Um, the Gold Elliot Goldfinger's Atlas of Anatomy. Is it his called Atlas of Anatomy? Human Anatomy for Artists by Elliot Goldfinger. That's another good book. And because of the, I'm making this guy, this character is inspired by, I'm going to put some, some kind of talons on his, the ends of his two middle fingers here. This, this guy, and for that I'm going to use curve, try, fill. Is that cool? That's cool. Split unmasked points. Control Z, Control Z, go here. This, this, my idea for this figure is that it's like a modern modern kind of riff on the Slee stack from the Land of the Lost TV show from the from mid 70s. Trim dynamic. Did I do that? Yeah, yeah. And the same thing's going to happen with his toes. So I'm going to take the gizmo, center that a little bit.
move it, move, move it into place. I'm cool with that. Pop the gizmo back on there. I'm going to custom orient, customize the orientation of the gizmo, and then I'm going to go to the deformer. Oh, I can't do that in symmetry mode. Okay. Turn off symmetry. Delete hidden. Go back to the gizmo. And center it. Reorient it. I orient it by hitting Alt and then grabbing onto the either the either the, the circles or you know the whatever the the corner the square anything now i'm going to go to the former i'm going to minimize the number of deformers in this axis i'm going to minimize the number of deformers in this axis i'm just going to go one two, three, four. I want to curl it a little bit, right? I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to push it in a little bit. Now I'm going to hit accept. And now I'm going to move it, move it again a little bit. Cool with that. Now I'm going to hit go to make sure local symmetry up here is off. I'm going to go to geometry, modify topology. Where is it? Mirror, mirror and weld. And there you go. And now I always like to keep my 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 things named. So I'm going to call that. Um, it's not really talon claw. It's kind of a claw. It's really. Not even a claw, but for those unfamiliar with what a slee stack is, this is a slee stack. That that's that's from an old TV show. So instead of giving it bulbous, you know, big eyes to see in the dark, I'm imagining that they're totally blind. And I put these kind of stone things over his eyes. And it's a Dynamesh model that um, still needs to be detailed. And, 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 and um, it had, this was a deep, more detailed, but then when I Dynameshed it, it lost some of the detail. So it needs to be reapplied, but that's no big deal. So now I want to go back to the Dame Standard Brush. You know, I've got Dame Standard 2 on here. But I get like a chattery stroke out of it. I'm either doing something incorrectly. See, I get that chatter. It doesn't operate the way I saw it operate live at the ZBrush, ZBrush Summit. So either I'm doing something wrong, which is 100% the case, I'm sure. Stroke, lazy mouse, 
lazy snap to zero. Otherwise, you get these connections like here. It's even premature to be doing this stuff because it's still like a low res. Low res, um, not low res, but it, because it's still a Dynamesh model. But I start anyway. No, Brad, let me try that. I don't want to fool around with this too much now. I'm going to, I appreciate the suggestion. I'm going to mess around with that when, when I'm offline because I want to keep this, keep this rolling. And I should be doing this. I know I'm erased. I know I'm, I know I'm deleting what I just did. But I need to be doing this with symmetry on. And when I go back with a with a Z remeshed and Z projected model, I can worry less about the symmetry. Break up break up the symmetry rather. I have 4 or 8 P2 going, Kyle. I appreciate it, man. I, I, I don't know what's up. Shit. Oops. I cursed. Is this still cool for you guys? Because, I mean, I, I've got a bit of work to do on them before I can start articulating them. It's just the nature of the process. And I don't have time to work on them in between sessions. So I want to make it look good, like worthy of this thing. But it's starting, the chest is starting to work out all right. I may wind up leaving this kind of like Giver looking uh, exo muscle suit thing going. I don't know. My original plan was to scale it up, lizard skin it, because I have even like, where is it, got a reference in there for, for lizard stuff, I've got this Farnese Hercules, this image of the Farnese Hercules, this image of the Farnese Hercules. And if I repeat myself in my sculpting, I, I tend to do that. Get those toes on there. Gonna dynamesh those. Actually, I'm going to delete one of them. Turn off symmetry. It's going to be hidden because the same thing's going to happen that happened with the. Uh, I'm 
let's just let's just let this multiple subdivisions know. See where it lands. I don't want it too big. It's lead hidden. What well, is visible? Oh, I get it. So I just I didn't see that that subdivision level level still. No, that's not enough. Ten thousand's not enough. Eighty eighty five thousand. That's cool. So I'll sculpt this up a little bit. Give it some shape. Trim dynamic. Rather than go through that thing again with the deformer, I just wanted to show the deformer because I like I love using the deformer. I'll just use the move brush to do this. Looks like a nasty toenail. Leave that for now. Mirror and weld. Shit. Did it again. Cursed. There we go. Curse all the time. I didn't have, I had local symmetry on. Oh, oh, off. And those are out too far. So I need to go unlock. Reset. Lock. Move it in. Move it up. Turn it off. I mean, I'm envisioning sculpting up completely, giving him uh, like a loincloth, giving him a spear, making one hand a grip hand, uh, one hand kind of like an like a action pose hand, you know, can you see that? Because there's a time delay, so I can't see if you're seeing what I'm seeing. Oh, I've been using ZBrush glands. I've been using Z. I've been using ZBrush since professionally. I've been using ZBrush since two thousand and five. I messed around with it a little bit in two thousand and four, two thousand and three. But as a uh, professional toy sculptor it's really been since 2006 first toys I did were for Hasbro and I was using another program called freeform to sculpt the basic forms and then using ZBrush to like just dial in the, the details basically with the pinch brush but that was like way er early on relatively speaking in ZBrush's development now Zebra I sculpt everything now I sculpt everything from scratch in ZBrush except for like some hard surface stuff I'm not really good enough with Z model modeler yet to be able to 
do something like that international harvester tra harvester tractor that I uh, was on I think I must have made top row because Jaime posted it Jaime posted it and it looked just absolutely freaking phenomenal I mean that thing was just incredible Oops, I just got a text message from a fellow toy sculptor. He's having a crisis. I'm just going to tell him I can't talk. Sorry about that. I'm just thinking about, like I said, this is like going to be non-linear kind of stuff. Um, thinking about how I'm going to set up his loincloth and whatever. I have Marvelous Designer. I don't really use it very well. And this is not a Marvelous Designer live stream now, is it? So we will not be using Marvelous Designer. I'm just thinking about whether I should put the loincloth on now. We've got 20 minutes left, or if I should show you guys real quick how to do um, like a quick how to start doing joints on the other figure. So say I had this figure here. We're, we're gonna finish. We're gonna finish this guy. In fact, let me save. But but quickly, so you can see I have that. Um, cylinder in where the elbow is the two of them actually but before I even get to that I'm going to move him up the tree here up the ladder and I'm going to now, sometimes I wind up getting like irregularly shaped IMM brushes out of this. But what I want to do is take an insert mesh sphere. Whoops. Split on mass points. Take that and subdivide it. I'm going to turn off symmetry. Delete that one. Oops, that was where I was before. I was. I need to go to geometry and delete the look or subdivision level. Here, footsteps. Switch back to a different brush. I get rid of that sidebar there. And is that the ground? Yeah, that's the ground. So now I'm going to. Reset this, center it, move this to the center of the shoulder. I'm just giving you like a taste for how I'm going to start to articulate the other guy when the time comes. I put it on transparent so I can position it. I'm going to, it's so much easier with the gizmo. I mean, it's like another planet, different planet level of easy. Now I'm going to take the move brush and move that no wrong wrong subtool. Move the body up a little bit so I can I don't want anything obstructing I 
That's exactly what I want. Now I'm going to go to start there, start by Boolean. That's what I want. I'm in subtool, I'm in Boolean, I'm in make Boolean mesh. Do you have any pre-made articulating systems you reuse? Or do you pretty much make each custom to specific character proportions? You know, um, Nicky only? Nicky, Nicky only? I'm sorry if I'm not saying that correctly. 80, um, 83? Um, you know, sometimes you get ready-made uh, bodies that are called bucks, and you sculpt on those, and they have their articulation built in. I typically sculpt the articulation for each figure from scratch because some the figures are so idiosyncratic. I mean, you can have like I can use that 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 cylindrical thing that I showed earlier. I don't know if you're watching. I have like a, a hinge joint kind of pre-made setup, but. You know, say you have something like a monstrous giant hulking figure, and then you have a guy that's in, in a skinny guy that's wearing pants and a sports coat. It's that they require different types of articulation, um, even though it's the same principle. So, from my experience, um, from my experience. It's, it's, I, I just, I, I, I honestly, I haven't really done an action figure from scratch in, in a while. Um, I used to do tons and tons and tons of action figures, but mostly now I've been doing statues. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's been, it's been a mixed bag. Um, although I did do an, I did do a, a, an unreleased action figure. Uh, not too long ago that I did do all the articulation from scratch so but getting to this so now I've got where to go it also you know that your live boolean model is present it'll start off as a u mesh underscore base so this is I'm going to rename this body I have a really sloppy uh, I mean, I have a really like dangerous turn off live boolean. I have a really dangerous workflow for this. I delete my model. I know you're not supposed to. I delete it. And then I append my live boolean model. Go solo there. Oh no, I don't want to do that. I want mask lasso. And I'm going to go split unmasked points. That's my arm, obviously. I'm going to take this. To hide everything else. Let's see if I want to. Sh do I want to shape that up first a little bit? I mean, there's some play that you can get away with because all this stuff gets pretty much re-engineered in Hong Kong. That's where all this stuff is manufactured. 
So I could, uh, and then I'm going, I'm going to apply Boolean that. Oops. I say whoops too much. Make Boolean mesh. And then what I did to the sphere, I'm going to undo all that stuff. Because I might, might, I might want, to, want to use it again. So I'll clone it and I'll throw it away up there. Because I'll, you know, if I want to do, I'm going to use it for the articulation of the neck. Delete, delete, pen, where's you mesh R, you mesh again, you mesh body. Fine. Now, you get a little bit of weirdness there. There's a kind of a split. So I'm gonna I'm gonna redynamesh this, this. Too many points. That's just sloppiness on my part. The gap shouldn't have been there. I should have I should have waited. This gap is just sloppiness, and 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 it will affect the, the joint if it's too close to the um, So because I can live boolean, I can just sculpt it in there. Now I will make the arm the subtractive body. Do it again. You guys, this I mean this is easy, right? You guys are following this. If anybody has any questions, just stop me. And this is pretty simple stuff. You guys are probably better at this than me. New body. Okay, I'm going to delete this one, append, image body 2, name body. I know the whole point of live boolean is just to have that flexibility and have all that stuff still in there. But man, I have, I'm like, I'm, I'm really OCD about uh, my sub tool menu having a lot of stuff. I just, because man, I'll, I'll have projects like that. I have like 72 sub tools or 60 sub tools, 50 sub tools, individual separate parts, not repeating parts. And that's it. So, you take this guy. Well, okay. Let's go transparent. Let's see where the rough center of that sphere was. This is just rough. There's no way to do it perfectly. In order to really check it, I need to take it and this is, you know, heresy. I have to take it into another software package like Maya or something else in order to check the true range of motion, um, you know, based on that original sphere and then the arm. Or I have another program that I use, an engineering program, that I can double check. Because playability is the maximum desired feature, excuse me, of making an action figure. I could start that hinge joint on the arm, but that's going to take too long. Let me save this. Yeah. 
yeah, I delete this. I delete the hell out of stuff sometimes by accident. But I found the, the way that the way that I get around that is I, I mouse either I leave the warning on or I mouse delete one at a time. Because deleting with the pen is just like click click click. You know, you can go right up the you can go right up right up the sub tool menu and just the palette and just like delete them all with with your pen. And that sucks. And I've done it. Not totally, but I've done it pretty close. This is the model. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna articulate this guy just like that. But first I want to make him more like tricked out. Like a lot more tricked out. I'm going to make these forearms wider. He's like Popeye the Monster Man. That's okay. I don't think anybody even gets that any, any longer. That's maybe a little too big. That's kind of okay. Sorry for the pauses. I'm just thinking as I go along. You know, I'm trying to trying to work this out. You know, I think that was, I think that's big enough, actually, the original size that I made them. So, I don't know if you're tired of seeing me Dame Standard that almost said it, almost dropped an S-bomb. A lot of the, the, the I hate, I can't say heck. I feel like I'm in Mayberry. Another reference nobody will get. I'm not hating on this though. I mean, it's not my like ideal model, but. Nozumi, thanks. Thanks about the Marv. I really appreciate that. That was a real labor of love. I had recently met Frank Miller in person. And, um, nice one, Brad. I recently met Frank Miller in person and I came back from Comic Con just totally starstruck. And I did the Marv as a tribute to Frank Miller. Uh, meeting him is one of the greatest moments of my life. America. I'm just being respectful of my host. Pixelogic is a first class organization and they deserve to have a first class presentation. So I'm trying to be as graceful as I can without cursing every five minutes. I curse every five minutes when I'm working or I get when I make mistakes. I, I curse when I make mistakes. Let me let me clarify that. I'll tell you Nizumi the thing in Nizumi just check out that comic book. Bro, well, I'm. T I, I have all. How many volumes? Ten volumes. I have more right here. Eight. Eight volumes. Forget. It. Some of those shots in that book are just amazing. Every panel's amazing. 
that's why I got into action figures. It's because originally I was going to be a comic book artist way back 20 years ago. I interviewed with DC and they were like, you want to try inking? And I'm like, no, I gave them a hard time. All uppity saying, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a penciler, I'm a penciler. You know, I had my head up my butt. And then um, I got a chance with a company called Valiant. I did a bunch of tryout work for them. And they liked what I did to the point that the editor of the book, the, the tryout of the, of, the, of the thing I did the tryout for, said they liked my work better. She liked my work better than what they published. But then I decided to go to Russia and continue my sculpture studies. I don't think this is going to be the way I'm going to do it. Just kind of sizing it, sizing it out. So, I'm going to save it. I've got two minutes left. One minute left. Does, does anyone have any questions? Um, I don't know if they have anyone scheduled after me. I don't want to go over my time. Plus, I want to keep these limited to an hour just because I, I've kind of got to get back to work. But um, I'm, I'm, I, re I really appreciate anybody checking this out who has checked it out. Um, I appreciate your time. You know, the, the, we're gonna, I'm going to keep developing this guy to a point where he's ready to be articulated. You know, he's again, he's, he's supposed to be like a modern, modern day slee stack. And then um, there'll be a lot more detail than this. And then we'll go back. Not we. Well, I want to need to delete. Right? Yeah. See, it gets tricky. Then, then we'll go back, meaning us as a group here, uh, and do the articulation stuff. So thank you for everyone's time. Thank you for checking this out. One more save, and I'm done. Oh, you can check me out on Instagram at... Um, Yeah, do you guys like this? Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. So everybody have a great night. And uh, it's not going to be next Friday. It's going to be the Friday after that. That's what I'm scheduled for. No, sir. My name's Joe, man. I appreciate you watching, really. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Oh, I have to, I have to stop streaming, don't I?